Hey everybody, uh, this is Mr. Math Blog. Uh, this is lesson uh, module 9-1 uh, for our Integrated Math 2 class. And so it's solving equations by taking square roots. So I think it's pretty easy. And then don't forget all your math lessons can be found at that groovy website. Just make sure you click uh, the Integrated Math 2 link at the top. All right, so here's our question is how can we solve quadratic equations <clears throat> by using square roots? Okay. So here we're going to find the square roots of these. You're going to have a handful of these on your assignment. So, so you guys know 7 times 7 equals 49. So that plus or minus just means our answer is going to have a plus or minus answer in it. So it's plus or minus the square root of uh, 49, which is just 7, okay? And your book will probably say plus 7 and minus 7. I think it's more efficient right here, okay? This one's going to be plus or minus 5, okay? And then this one here, on the uh, down here, we got to do the prime factorization. So 12 is 2 times 2. 2 times uh, 3, and then a pair of 2's come out, so it's plus or minus 2 root 3, okay? And then here on this one, we got a fraction, so square root the top and square root the bottom, so plus or minus, the square root of 16 is 4, the square root of 9 is 3, so plus or minus 4 thirds, all right. Okay, so on this one here, you guys, my students cannot use a calculator, so I don't want you to use a calculator. You'll miss the point on this, you guys. Um, if you do. You remember uh, decimal place value, you guys? This is tenths, this is hundredths, so this ends in the hundredths spot. So this is actually um, sixteen hundredths. Over here, this is twenty-seven hundredths right there. So let's write them as a fraction, okay? And then we can square root the top and square root the bottom. And don't forget it has the plus or minus, okay? Square root of sixteen is four, square root of uh, hundred is ten. And then go ahead and reduce it. 2 fifths. Okay, so this is going to be 27 hundredths here. Okay, so square root of the top and the bottom. And then we know that square root of um, 100 is uh, 10 times 10. So that's where we get 10 on that one right there. And then here we get uh, two threes on the inside brings one three on the outside. So on top we have plus or minus 3 root 3. On the bottom we just have 10. Okay, now if we had a radical on the bottom and we have one of those coming up, uh, we have to get rid of it, and it's called rationalizing the denominator. We'll talk about that in a second. All right, so um, uh, this next part deals with the concept of when we have a quadratic equation. So say we had uh, x squared equals 9. Well, x would be both 3 and negative 3 when we square that. Uh, equals 9. 3 squared and negative 3 times negative 3 also equals 9. Okay, so when, uh, when we have a quadratic equation, x squared equals a number, then it's always plus or minus the square root. So uh, we might have something like uh, y squared equals 24. So same, just like uh, on top, you get y uh, equals plus or minus the square root of 24. And then 24 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And then a pair of twos come out, and you have a leftover two and three inside, so it's plus or minus two root six. All right, we'll have some of those. So here we go. Solve, uh, and then we're going to have uh, answers in simplified radical form. Now, your textbook is going to say use a graphing calculator and decimals to estimate, and we're going to skip that part because our kids don't have graphing calculators. And we think you missed the point of the math in here, so we want you to leave answers in simplified radical form. Okay, put your calculators down. I, I tell students as soon as they pick up the calculators, they turn their brains off and they, they don't think um, uh, what's happening with the math inside. So I know you guys are thinking, but I like my calculator. I know. All right, anyways, you guys, these aren't that bad. Um, uh, plus 5 plus 5, so we get 4x squared equals 7. Then we'll divide by 4. We get x squared equals 7 fourths. Now this is where it's plus or minus the square root of 7 fourths. Okay, so we square root the top and square root the bottom. And then the square root of 4 is just 2, so it's plus or minus root 7 over 2. Okay, and that's a, a great answer right there. Okay, we, if there was a radical in the bottom, we're going to get rid of it. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. That's coming up. But that's our answer right there. Okay, all right. So here we're going to plus 8 to both sides, and then we're going to divide by 2. And then so we get plus or minus 2. Okay, square root of 4 is 2. 
All right, so here we go. Same thing, you guys. Uh, remember, when we had uh, y squared equals a number, then y was equal to plus or minus the square root of that number. So here we have, here's our y squared. It's the quantity x plus 5 squared. So this equals plus or minus the square root of 36 right there, okay, which is 6. So that means x plus 5 equals 6, or x plus 5 equals negative 6. Here's the plus or minus 6, okay? Minus 5, minus 5 on both of those equations, and we get x equals 1 or negative 11. Okay, let's try that with this one. Okay, so plus or minus uh, square root of 64 is 8. So x minus 7 equals 8, or x minus 7 equals negative 8. Plus 7 plus 7, and we get 15 or negative 1. Okay, all right, so here, uh, here before we do the square root, you guys, we got to divide by 4 first. So 24 divided by 4 is 6, and then we do plus or minus the square root of 6 and then subtract 10 All right when we subtract 10 this does not have a radical so typically write this number first I notice your textbook writes the radical first but if you write the radical first some kids want to put the 10 inside the radical so I think it's cleaner if we write uh, the negative 10 uh, first so negative 10 plus or minus root 6 I think I think your textbook writes uh, uh, root 6 minus 10 and then negative root 6 minus 10. I think that's how they write it. So anyways, I think this answer looks cleaner right there. Okay, and if you wrote the 10 on this side, some kids would want to put that inside the radical and then some kids will take it even farther and do 6 minus 10 and, and you just wind up into a mess. So that's our answer right there, okay? All right, so here we go. We got uh, two thirds, so we got to get rid of that two thirds. Let's multiply both sides by the reciprocal, three halves. Okay, and so this is going to be over one. Threes cancel, the twos cancel. We'll make this over one, and then two goes into 36 18 times, and 18 times three is 54. Then we plus or minus the square root of that. Okay, let's simplify that square root of 54. Okay, so 54 is right there. 54, the prime factorization is 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Alrighty, and then uh, so a pair of 3's come out and the 2 times 3 stays inside right there. So we get plus or minus 3 root 6. Don't forget x plus 5 equals that, so we'll subtract 5 and we get negative 5 plus or minus 3 root 6, okay? All right, let's try this one. Okay, here we're going to subtract 10 from both sides, and here we're going to divide by 7. Okay, so now we're going to do plus or minus the square root of that. So it's the square root of the top, the square root of the bottom. Let's simplify that 8, okay? So 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. A pair of 2's come out, okay? Now, uh, we can't have radicals in the denominator. I don't know who made up that rule, but they, they don't like you to have radicals in the denominator. So what we do is it's uh, called rationalizing the denominator. We're going to multiply this fraction times 1, because anything times 1 won't change the value. But our 1 is going to be the square root of 7 over the square root of 7. That way we get two root 7s in the bottom, okay? So there, that's just 1 right there, okay? So on top now we have 2... And then inside we have 2 times 7, and then on the bottom we have 7 times 7, okay? And then a pair of 7s on the bottom come out, and there's no more radical. Okay, so there's our answer right there, plus or minus 2 root 14 all over 7. Okay, here, here's one. Uh, subtract 150 from both sides, divide by 5, and we get x squared equals negative 25. I will never be able to square a number and get a negative 25. I can square any number, positive or negative, but it's always going to be positive. So here, when you have a squared equals a negative number, you just say no solution. That, that won't happen. Okay, later on we'll talk about imaginary numbers, but there's no real solution. So right now we just, just say no solution. All right, so your favorite, an application problem. A person standing on the second floor balcony drops keys to friends standing below. The keys are dropped from a height of 10 feet, okay? And then the height in feet of the keys as they fall is given by this function right here, where t is the time in seconds. Uh, since the keys were dropped, okay? So here's that 10 feet where it stopped right there. That's that, this is this 10 right here, okay? And so the question is, if the keys are caught at a height of four feet, so that's what goes right here, four feet goes right here, find the elapsed time. So we're just gonna solve for t. So set it equal to four. 
and then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, subtract 10 from both sides, okay? And then, because uh, 4 minus 10 is negative 6. Now, we got a negative, but this is negative also. So if we divide both sides by a negative 16, or by negative 1 first, and then divide by 16, and then reduce that, we get t squared equals plus or minus uh, 3 eighths, okay? And then, uh, now since we're dealing with time, we're just dealing with the positive right there, okay? All right, so this is where I'll let you use a calculator uh, just because uh, we're dealing with time and we want to know about how many seconds. So, so we don't want the negative answer. We're, we want to, um, uh, only the positive value. So the elapsed time before the keys are caught will be approximately 0.61 seconds. All right, if you guys are in our class, that would be your assignment. Take care.